With the energy of the stadium, um, this place, I'm told, is a wonderful environment to catch a college football game in. I'm looking forward to watching the action today. Texas won the toss. The Longhorns defer. West Virginia to receive. And Nick Rose kicks it out of the end zone for his 33rd touchback of the season. A West Virginia got its first Big 12 win last week against Texas Tech. And the quarterback for the Mountaineers, Skyler Howard, he grew up a Longhorns fan in Fort Worth, Texas. Got off to a great start this year, but he struggled in conference play. Yeah, he's a guy, though, that Dana Holgerson really likes what he does pre-snap reads. He gets this team into the right running plays. I wouldn't call him a dynamic passer at this point. That's something he's still trying to develop as a player. And we've got a whistle before the first snap. Ball start. Offense number 77. Five-yard penalty, first down. Referee Brad Van Vark, guilty party Marcel Lazard, the redshirt freshman out of Bloomfield, New Jersey. Wendell Smallwood running through defenders. And he gets a nice gain on first down, 14 yards for Smallwood, who had a career-high 163 last week. Here goes that up-tempo offense. You blink, you'll miss a play if you're the Texas defense. Adjusting and getting in the right place will be important. Screen pass, Smallwood out of bounds as he gets across the 40-yard line. He is a dual threat out of that backfield, 21st catch of the season. Yeah, I just love the way they use him that time. They're lining up at the wide receiver position. He's a mismatch for most linebackers in the Big 12 Conference. Smallwood motions. Skyler Howard will run it himself. And he's taken down at the 45-yard line by Tank Jackson, the senior out of Houston. Gain of three, back to the air. That's caught by Karan White, the younger brother of Kevin White, the former All-American at West Virginia, who was a first-round draft pick of the Bears. Yeah, and he got the start today at the Z position. They really like what he's, do what he's doing here, and he's really developing five catches last year, and this coaching staff said he had his best game last week versus Texas Tech. We apologize for the technical difficulties, having some video issues right now. Howard's pass is intercepted by Devontae Davis. If this is your first time watching Texas, you want to keep an eye on these talented defensive backs, and Devontae Davis is one of the starting cornerbacks. Now, that is not the best thrown ball from Howard in his career, but the fact that Davis was there, he secured the interception. This is a bunch of young talent on this Texas defense. They're coming up with a big turnover, giving this offense great field position. We mentioned the struggles Texas has starting games on the road this season. In true road games, they've been outscored 51-0 in the first quarter this year. Jonathan Gray on first down into West Virginia territory. He had three touchdowns and a win against the Mountaineers last year. This is Gerard Hurd, the redshirt freshman. And he is bottled up just shy of the 45 by Shaq Petaway. And it'll bring up third down for Texas. This is where the Mountaineers' defense has been terrific all season. Yeah, they're one of the best in the country, and a lot of it has to do with the pressure that they'll bring. Look for them to blitz on a third down. They want her to get the ball out of his hand quickly. And defensive coordinator for West Virginia, Tony Gibson, says, I like to bring the heat. That will be a fumble, and it's recovered by Texas. Miscommunication there. Hurts yeah. looking to the sideline. There was a check with me play where they're looking to see the best look to determine the play. And, and the center, Taylor Doyle, just snaps the football. They're lucky 
that they're able to punt this football and West Virginia didn't recover a mishap and a misassignment early on for Texas. Dixon's punt will go into the end zone for a touchback. So Texas got the turnover, unable to capitalize. And this is what happened on third down. Yeah, the center, Taylor Doyle, he doesn't even, he never looks back to see if Gerard Hurt is ready for the snap. That's just very unusual play, sloppy from this Texas offense, and Charlie Strong was not happy about it. They've got the backup quarterback, William Crest, in the game is one of the running backs here for West Virginia, and that's Crest in motion. Howard looks his way, Crest unable to hold on, incomplete, second and ten. Nishraf, Ahmad Brooks, impact players when West Virginia has the football. Yeah, Wendell, Wendell Smallwood is approaching 1,000 yards. He'll be the guy today, but if they are to stop the run, Texas, it'll start with number 98, Hassan Ridgeway. This guy is a man. He's just got to turn his motor on, and when he does, he's hard to block. First carry of the game for Russell Shell, who's coming off a 100-yard game. He gets three. Desmond Jackson on the stop. Third down defense has been an issue all season for Texas. Opponents converting at a 49% clip. Yeah, you work so hard to get to this down. You've got to get off the field, especially in road environments. You don't want the home team to get in a rhythm. Howard in trouble. Checks down. That's caught by Shell. But he only got a couple of yards, and it'll bring up fourth down for West Virginia. Well, that was a good defensive series there from Texas, keeping everything in front of him on third down, coming up and making a play. The senior, Peter Jenkins, he's been very special for this unit. He has led this group all season long, and there with a big tackle on third down. Jenkins, the team's leading tackler. Nick O'Toole leading the Big 12 in punt yardage. On to kick it away to the Big 12's best return man in DeJay. Johnson just takes him out near roll. And it's going to be down at the 23-yard line. Gerard Hurd, the freshman starting for Texas, took over as the starting quarterback in week two for Tyrone Swoops. A bounce-back performance last week against Kansas after struggling two weeks ago against Iowa State. Yeah, it's about confidence for him. You know, last week they start the game with a bomb to John Burt downfield. I wouldn't be surprised to see them early on with designed quarterback runs and taking a shot downfield. John Burt is down here in the bottom part of your screen. They like to go to him. He's a long body, a former hurdler out of Florida. And he's, it looks like right now he's drawing another one-on-one -on -one matchup. Get him! Bird. Downfield, he's got his tight end, Caleb Blewett. And Blewett inside the Mountaineer 30-yard line, a gain of 31. Yeah, this is just a great story. This kid started off the year at defensive end, and he's been willing and able to move to the other side of the ball, been one of the better blockers for this team, and really of late, has really started to catch the football, something that Texas really needs, a middle-of-the-field threat, one that can be an outlet for their young quarterback. Bird's going to keep this. He gets the edge. Has a path to the end zone. Texas in for a touchdown, but there is a flag. Holding. Offense number 55, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Yeah, that's Connor Williams, the outstanding left tackle. And you'll watch him here. I'll, I'll, we'll take a look at this. He is right here, and just as this defender tries to separate, it's that last pull and tug. And now offensive linemen are taught if you get inside, you can hold, but you can't pull. He's a young, offensive, talented uh, left tackle who started every game for the Horns. But those are the places you can't make. Now you've really put um, your team behind the chains. That takes a touchdown off the board. There's Jonathan Gray looking for some room. And Gray stumbles down at the 22-yard line. Nice pick up there. It'll bring up second down. Are you a little surprised it's been Gray 
on the first two series after Deontay Foreman played very well last week? Well, I, I think the, the the reason for that is, is Jonathan Gray is a senior leader, and, and um, they are they are they need senior leaders. And Jonathan Gray is still trying to find his rhythm. He hasn't had the year that he would have liked to as a senior. Though. Gray looking for some room, and he picks up a first down for Texas. Nice job by Gray to avoid the ambush. I think the crowd wanted a flag. A little extracurricular activity there between Caleb Blewett. Now if Texas gets a little closer, we could see Tyrone Swoops. The backup quarterback runs the 18-wheeler package, which has been lethal. Flag on the play as Gray got the call. Illegal formation, offense, five players in the backfield, five-yard penalty, replay, first down. So we'll back up Texas. This is a West Virginia defense that's healthier, but the Mountaineers still without their best player, Carl Joseph, who is having an All-American caliber season, out for the season with a knee injury. He was one of the best safeties in all of college football before getting hurt in practice. First time I laid my eyes on Carl Joseph in 2012 when they were in Austin, you could just see the talent on this kid. He can cover, he can tackle, and he does it with passion. He's a tremendous leader for them, and uh, they have certainly missed him in his absence. Heard to the air, dangerous pass. Ball is deflected and nearly intercepted. Yeah, heard here throwing in the coverage, and it looked like he had an outlet there for Marcus Johnson, but decides to go back to Blewett on a seam route. Blewett couldn't quite hold on to it, and they're lucky that ball hit the ground, and Texas has another opportunity here to try to punch one in the end zone. We showed you the stat earlier. Texas under Charlie Strong, 10-1 when scoring first, 0-11 when the opposition scores first. Gray surges ahead to the 18-yard line, brought down by the nose tackle, Kyle Rose. And a big third down early in this game. And when you're down here in the red zone, things get tighter because of that back line and the distance. So you're limited in terms of being able to throw the ball downfield. What do defenses do? They stack the box and try to prevent you from running. A lot of zero coverage down here, and it looks like that's what you're getting here all across the board from West Virginia. Caught by Marcus Johnson, but well shy of the first down marker. Nice tackle in space by Darrell Worley. And Nick Rose will come on to try a field goal. That was very interesting. They started with a bare front, everybody on the line of scrimmage. And if you watch the Iowa State game, Iowa State had success dropping eight people back in coverage and forcing Gerard Hurd to hold the football. And he'd get a little antsy, break outside of the pocket, and wasn't doing much once he got outside of the pocket. So if you're West Virginia, you can tell they picked that up from Iowa State, who had a lot of success on the road in Ames against the Longhorns. A 31-yarder for Rose, who's made just two of five in true road games. And this one is good. So the Longhorns on the board first. Three-nothing Texas. Javon Durant and Gary Jennings back deep for West Virginia. This will go as a touchback, and we say hello to Matt Schick in the studio. Hello, Anish. Got an update for you from a TCU, Kansas. Lost their last 34 road games, taking on an angry Horn Frogs club. Kevante Turpin, Texas fans remember him, caught four touchdowns against the Horns. Here, 49 yards for the score, 7-0 TCU. That one could get ugly quickly. Kansas last week lost to Texas 59-20. snap. Here's Smallwood. Gets a block from Wellman. And 
Wendell Smallwood picks up nine, second and one. Malik Jefferson, the terrific true freshman linebacker with the tackle. Great block there, though, by 28 in blue. Yeah, and it was just a great job of Smallwood of getting behind Wellman and finding that little crease. And Smallwood gets enough for a West Virginia first down. It's been more of a run-heavy offense this year, but it hasn't exactly been a sudden change, as you see from those numbers. Dana Holgerson told us he's been moving in this direction for the past few years. Flag down as Howard throws it away. Holding. Offense number 77, 10 yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. Second penalty on the redshirt freshman Lazard, who's making just his second career start. You look at the pass to run ratio when Dana Holgerson took over. That's when they had the Geno Smiths and the Tavon Austins and the Stedman Baileys of the world. Right now, his best personnel, they're guys in the running game. You're right. And it also, I think, is the strength of the quarterback, Skylar Howard, in getting them in the right plays, dissecting what the defenses are doing. And he can run the football. So it just suits this offense, and personnel has kind of forced them into that as well. Another nice run by Smallwood, a gain of 14, and another nice block there by Elijah Wellman. Yeah, Smallwood, he's just a very elusive runner, and you see him here, he's very patient, great vision, knowing when to cut, when to stay behind his blockers, and he's fast enough to hit the big one. Um, he's been the guy for them all season long, and when you talk to Dana Hogerson, he says it, this is our guy. Design quarterback run, and Howard is to the 41-yard line, so third and five coming up for West Virginia. Ahmad Holgerson also said part of the reason he's moved to a more of a run-heavy philosophy, he looks at what everybody else is doing in the Big 12, and he says you've got to do something different. Yeah, and it helps, too, when you when you brought in offensive line coach Ryan Crook here on a third down as they empty set. Howard will tuck it. He's going to be stopped short of the marker, so fourth down coming for West Virginia. Nice tackle by Peter Jenkins. No question, and that's the hardest thing in football to do is tackle in the open field, and Howard there didn't look like that was a design run. It looked like there were routes behind coverage, but he just couldn't get to him. Um, Texas with enough pressure there to flush him outside of the pocket, and now they get off the field on third down. Nick O'Toole will punt it away, known for his incredible facial hair. Used to be known as Boomstash. <laughs> Still is, but he's got a boom beard. Jay Johnson corralled inside the 10-yard line. Great special teams coverage after a 50-yard punt. College football tonight on ABC. Oklahoma visits Baylor. Ahmad, were you surprised that the Bears were only ranked sixth when the playoff rankings came out Tuesday? behind one loss teams, Notre Dame and Alabama. I was, and, and especially considering that Iowa jumps into, um, you know, the number six spot. I, I just found that, or pardon me, number five spot. I just find that very interesting, but I, I think the Big 12 will make up some ground here. As you, we know, the schedule's backloaded. So the big games are coming for the Big 12 in this conference to really show what they're made of. Deontay Foreman gets the call on first down. He picks up six. Foreman last week against Kansas, a career-high 157 yards, including a 93-yard touchdown run. That was the third longest run in the history of Texas football, and there have been some pretty good running backs to come through Austin. Yeah, that was surprising. Yeah, I mean, you look at his breakaway speed on that 93-yard run, um, he was certainly rolling. That's Hurd, and he's wrapped up in the backfield. Kwiatkowski and Dillon were there, and it's third and long. Yeah, and speaking of impact players, Nick Kwiatkowski, the linebacker, he's played sandbacker, middle linebacker, and he's just got a nose for the football. Tony Gibson said this is the most underrated player in the Big 12, and number 33, Deontay Foreman, is getting more carries now as he gets older. Very strong runner, hard to bring down with initial contact, and West Virginia has had issues missing tackles, so look for him today to break some of those would-be and wimpy tackles. Texas 0 for 2 on third down. 
Open receiver, Burt. The freshman from Tallahassee run out of bounds by Dylan near midfield. And a big first down for Texas. Yeah, this is not a look that Texas shows a lot on film. This is a bunch look here, and you see Burt just runs a corner out, and there was some miscommunication on the back end for West Virginia, and he was wide open. And I think when he turned around, he was actually surprised that there wasn't a defender back there. Big play when backed up, up against your end zone for Texas to come out here and with a big strike to John Burt. He is their big play guy. He's a fine wide receiver, a freshman out of Florida. He's a good football player. Sixth catch of the season for Burt for more than 35 yards. That ball hits the ground. It's picked up by West Virginia. And Jared Barber runs it in for a defensive score. Take a look at this again as just looks like there the handoff between the quarterback Hurd and Foreman just wasn't on point and it almost looked like Foreman reached for the football and you're told as as a running back you open up that pocket it's the quarterback's responsibility to put it where it's supposed to be and I'd like to get a front if we can get an end zone angle of that maybe we can get a better look at what happened there but what a big turn of events for this West Virginia defense and how about the Mike linebacker, Jared Barber, coming back from his first game from injury with a play to really get some energy inside of this stadium and give them a boost. The play is a touchdown. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, West Virginia number four, leaving the bench and coming on to the field. We also have a sideline warning against the Texas bench. The 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. All right, so a lot to go through there. The penalty after the touchdown, so the score counts. And a sideline warning against Texas. The first sideline warning is just that. It's just a warning. Subsequent ones result in penalties. Josh Lambert on for the point after. It's true. So the pendulum swings quickly. Texas with a big play to get near midfield. A mathematically, yes, they can still get to a bowl. They've got to beat Texas Tech at home and then Baylor on the road. For the Mountaineers, there's a chance to finish the season potentially on a five-game win streak. Bouncing ball scooped up by DJ Johnson. West Virginia was backed up on the kick because of a penalty. And Johnson gets popped at the 32. Well, the road has not been kind to Texas this season. In three true road games, the Longhorns have been blown out. Notre Dame in week one. TCU was a 50-7 disaster. They got shut out in Ames 24-0. They hadn't scored in the first half entering this game. And 11 of the 21 first half drives coming into today were three and outs. Yeah, those are just poor numbers. There's really no way you can slice it up. And, and in talking to Jay Norvell and this, and this staff, it, they made it very clear to the players. You've got to come out. You've got to find a way to come out with energy on the road. And oftentimes with young teams, you see struggles. And Texas is a young team. But there's no excuse for those types of numbers. The give is to Deontay Foreman. Into West Virginia territory. There goes Foreman. In for the score, 65 yards. He has become a burner. Wow, I, I tell you what, I, I had not seen this until last week from Deontay Foreman. The big play ability. Now he had a 50 yard run versus Oklahoma, but the ability to take it the distance and to burn by the secondary, that's what's been special. And for Foreman, that's got to feel good. It was Deontay Foreman who coughed it up on the last Texas drive. Extra point is good. Yeah, let's take a look at this replay. He's going to end up picking up a good block here from Caleb Blewett. 
But watch once he gets to the second level here as we run this. A little misdirection to try to get him off. He picks up the block. In here, there is nothing there. But what is really amazing is he outruns the corner, the second, the member of the secondary from the back side. That is extremely hard to do in the middle of the field. And they've got an, an opportunity to chase the other pylon and to catch you. Uh, look, there's no question about it. This kid is 240 pounds. And if you can run that fast and you're that big, look, the future is bright for Deontay Foreman. Foreman did have back-to-back 100-yard -back games against TCU and Oklahoma, but was held in check in Ames. And when you saw him rip a 93-yard run against Kansas last week, you were stunned that he had that in him. Yeah, and then yeah, it was interesting just listening to some of the stories. This kid coming out of high school, supposedly was running a 4-4, and, and it's, it's starting. I'm starting to believe that he's that fast with the way that what he's been able to do the last two weeks. Another touchback for Nick Rose. You need to get the Watch ESPN app. It is free to download. It allows you to watch all the games on the go, on your tablet, on your computer. Wherever you might be, it is the Watch ESPN app. We'll have that fired up after our game today to watch some of the later games. Big weekend in college football, especially with the regular season winding down. And in the Big 12, certainly a lot of playoff implications with Oklahoma and Oklahoma State and Baylor and perhaps even TCU still. On the ground to Smallwood. Slips one tackle. And Smallwood is going to be close to a first down. Wendell Smallwood running strong. He does get enough for a first down. He's just a very smooth athlete. Does everything with great fluidity. And with that last run, he's now over a thousand for the season. Howard in trouble and sacked. And that has become the identity of this Texas defense. Jackson and Hughes were there. They only had seven sacks in the first five games, 23 in the last four. You know, the interesting thing is they've actually gotten to the quarterback. They've missed a lot of sacks. So you see these numbers increasing. Part of it is players are just starting to make plays. Vance Befford, uh, the defense coordinator for Texas, he likes to bring pressure, much like defense coordinator Tony Gibson for West Virginia. And you will see that all day today from both of these teams. Both of them will apply pressure to the quarterback. On second and 13, West Virginia elects to keep it on the ground. Jenkins on the stop, a gain of four. Smallwood again on the carry, and it'll bring up third down for the Mountaineers. Yeah, these are not the situations you want to be in if you're West Virginia. Howard is still developing his game as a passer, and in talking to Dana Hogerson this week, he said, we, like, we shoot for about 65 to 70 percent completion percentage. But it's going to be hard for Howard to be able to do that. He's not tall enough to see over the line, and he's just not there yet. Open receiver is Dekeel Shorts, and he lunges into Texas territory, 16 yards and a West Virginia first down. It's a good job of finding space. He got to the stick, set down, in zone coverage, and Howard put a ball on the money. Shorts has had a catch in every game this season. Russell Shell to the 45 for a gain of four. Yeah, this is not something you see a lot of uh, from Howard on film. He stares down the wide receiver, but there's just no players in the middle of the field for Texas. The safety's 25 yards deep, and that was an easy pitch and catch there for West Virginia. Once again on the ground, and right back to the line of scrimmage, so another third down. Skyler Howard, an interesting story. He had zero FBS offers coming out of high school. So he began his career as a walk-on at Stephen F. Austin, ran out of money, went the junior college route, and then elected West Virginia in large part because of the Big 12 affiliation. He's a Texas kid. Caught the blitz there. Good time to get it out of his hand. Screen pass caught by White. He's short of the first down, so fourth down for West Virginia. The ball inside 
the Texas 45-yard line, they and it looks like the offense yeah. will stay on the field. Yeah, this is that territory in between both 40s. Offensive coordinators um, make a tough decision here as, as it looks like the punting unit is also coming out, out on the field. Dana Holgerson unhappy with his quarterback on that play as he has some choice words for his quarterback. Well, there's a two-second difference in the play clock and the game clock. And that will be a delay of game unless West Virginia call timeout. Yeah, at this point, it doesn't really matter. You know, those extra five yards can help sometimes if you've got a punter that can boom like West Virginia does. Oh, they call him Boomstash, so. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a leg for sure. He had the mustache a couple of years ago. Then last year, it was the Raleigh <laughs> Fingers look. It's great. With the curled up stash, use a lot of wax. And now, I mean, he, he's committed fully. <laughs> Look at that thing. It's hanging outside of his chin strap. That's awesome. Tell you what, if, <laughs> if the Mountaineer needed a double to fire that musket. <laughs> That's great. Look no further than Nick O'Toole. Well, Texas shrugged off some of its road woes with 10 first quarter points. West Virginia getting its score from its defense. It's easy to make make light of a situation like that, but I, you know, I wish I could grow some facial hair, but I can't. That's a, it's a good beard there for O'Toole. Great putt by O'Toole. And they're gonna mark it down at the one yard line. That's just great hang time. That thing lands right at about the six yard line. I mean, just a beautiful punt. Great concentration there. And right now you're watching the ball. If the ball at any point crosses that goal line, it's a touchback. Yep. Doesn't matter where the player is standing or where the player touches the ball. It's where the ball is. Very athletic play there. And again, the call on the field important here. They say down at the one yard line. And so Texas will be pinned deep as we get going here in the second quarter. Usually offenses here like to run the football early to get their quarterback some space. But Jonathan Gray in the backfield could be an early down and an early touch for him. They give it to Gray. Not much room. And the senior Jonathan Gray, his last time here, um, was in open field and actually had an Achilles injury and you know in talking to him this week it was very clear that this young man wanted to come back out and prove himself and he was just happy that he could play football again so um, the young the senior today trying to prove that um, he's worthy of the touches he's getting another call for Gray and it'll bring up third down now for Texas Big sequence here that impacts field position in this second quarter. Yeah, Tony Gibson, they run a 3-3-5 look where they bring in an extra member of the secondary. Only three down linemen, but they like to bring pressure on third down. And this is one of those downs for Texas. If you're the offensive line, good communication, knowing where the rush is coming is important. And that's Gray with a nice run, broke a couple of tackles. And he gets a first down to move the chains for Texas and gives the Longhorns some breathing room. That was a good run. Didn't look like much was there on the right side of that field. Jonathan Gray navigated his way through traffic and picks up a very big first down for Texas. You know, he hasn't had the senior year many expected out of him. Remember, Gray was a guy who came to Texas with incredible hype and was coming off one of the great prep careers. On the ground again. And stood up by K.J. Dillon and a host of blue shirts after a gain of three. Yeah, K.J. Dillon is a very interesting story here. He plays that spur position, and, and he's a player that, as I said, he's that fifth member of the secondary. He almost plays like a linebacker last week, though, versus Jakeem Grant for Texas Tech. He was outstanding in coverage. And as you see him now, he's also lined up here on it looks like Caleb Blewett, just a very versatile defender. Gray gets the edge. 
Spins back across the 20, but there is a flag back at the 18-yard line. Holding. Offense number 55. 10 yards from the previous spot. Second penalty on the true freshman left tackle Connor Williams. Tough first half, but they feel this kid is going to be a star. The penalty is half the distance to the goal. Yeah, he played a lot of tight end in high school. So when you, when you look at this kid, he's he's very athletic. He's not as tall as you would like, but his feet are outstanding. He gets in the right position, and he's still developing. But part of the reason he's holding, he's got an aggressive mentality. He comes out, and he's trying to punch you in the mouth every single play. One of two freshmen on that offensive line, along with the right guard, Patrick Vahe. Hurd's going to keep it and run, and he is brought down. That was Petaway. That was a very good open field tackle, and Tony Gibson this week said Gerard Hurd reminds him of Trevon Boykin from TCU with the exceptional running ability. He's not there yet as a passer, but this kid has exceptional speed, and now you are about to see how much he's developed as a quarterback. In these third and long situations, more than likely they put it in the air. Can he find the right guy at the right time to move the chains? What does Tony Gibson draw up here for West Virginia? We'll find out. They're dropping. Three-man rush. Screen pass. And a late flag after the catch was made by Foreman. Illegal block in the back, number 77 of the offense. That penalty is declined, brings up fourth down. That was the other freshman on the O-line, Vahe. And now a chance for West Virginia to capitalize, potentially with a short field. Michael Dixon, the freshman from Sydney, Australia, kicks it away. Gary Jennings watches it go out of bounds. West Virginia football, terrific starting field for those games on the road. West Virginia bounced back last week to get its first league win against Texas Tech. Russell Shell draggling a defender all the way to midfield for a gain of seven. Been an odyssey for Shell, who began his career at Pittsburgh, was set to transfer to UCLA, then had a change of heart. Pitt didn't want him back, so he ends up at West Virginia. There's Skyler Howard, quarterback keeper, and he's going to be close to a first down. Jenkins on the stop for Texas. Yeah, that's where Howard can make the biggest difference is in the quarterback run game. Yeah, he's done a fantastic job this year of knowing when to keep the football and when to hand it off in those zone read, read option plays. And there you saw it, just enough to get the first down, the good awareness there to lunge forward and to pick up the first. And initially they said third down. Now they've moved the chain, so it will be first down West Virginia from the 46 of Texas. Howard off play action, open receiver, Karan White. And that's a big gainer, 19 yards for White. He was coming off a breakout game, and Dana Holgerson wanted to temper the comparisons to his older brother, Kevin White, but they do feel Karan's got a bright future in Morgantown. Yeah, Dana said that he's further along at this point in his career than Kevin White was, and he believes the way that he played last week, he probably is closer to the junior version of Kevin White, which is surprising to hear, but he's really, turned, he's really come on these last two weeks. Here's the blitz from Texas. Oh, it's Shell tumbling across the 30. Yeah, just a one-on-one -on -one matchup with the freshman cornerback, Devontae Davis, and he wins the matchup there as he was in soft coverage. It looked like he got a little banged up there on the play, holding that left hand. Haven't seen him return to the field yet. Smallwood into the game at a running back. William Crest into the game as well. And here's Smallwood. 
Dana Holgerson described him as tough repeatedly yesterday. That's been on display in this first half. Yeah, but he's also got talent. It's, it's one thing to be tough. It's another thing to have the exceptional lateral movement that he has and the breakaway speed. Howard's going to keep this on that belly option. Breaks a tackle still on his feet and gets inside the 10-yard line. I don't know how he got away from Jason Hall. Well, because he tried to sling him down and not drop him. This is great technique here. He gets him, but instead of making sure he comes down to the ground, he tries to throw him forward. That's not something you're taught while tackling during the week. That was out of Sonic the Hedgehog's playbook. Smallwood pushes across the five, and he's going to be stopped at the one-yard line. This is the offense that we talked about in the open, and prior to this series, the West Virginia running backs were averaging six yards a pop on the ground. And you see it now, when you add the element of Skylar Howard being able to run, the, quarter, and the defense has to account for him, really thins out the defense, as they are now inside the one yard line looking to punch a score in here. Elijah Wellman is the deep back. Wellman gets the call, plows ahead, and a flag down. They signal touchdown, but there is a penalty marker. Offside, defense number 99. That penalty's declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. The touchdown stands, and West Virginia back on top. And West Virginia had only scored in the red zone four of the last eight trips. Easy to do from this distance when you got a yard out. Just punch it in, get in behind that aggressive offensive line, Panky, Orlowski, and Bosch. They're the ones that anchor the middle. Dana believes that those three guys, when they want to run the football, it has to be in between those A-gaps because they are aggressive, physical, and they showed it there getting the, the one yard. And it's nice to see a guy like Wellman get rewarded. He's made some terrific blocks in this first half. In fact, he's done that all season. He's been a, a guts, no glory guy. Well, finally, he gets a little bit of glory for himself. Yeah, these plays go a long way in confidence and helping players stay motivated. And when you get a chance to get into pay dirt at any position, it's fun and always um, creating memories when you can score points for your team. His third touchdown of the season, first rushing touchdown. And West Virginia looking to make it 14 to 10 with a Josh Lambert extra point. The ammo on that last drive was simple. It was the ground pound from West Virginia. Skyler Howard kept this play alive. Elijah Wellman, Nick O'Toole, is not picked up in a long time. Short kick. This is Kirk Johnson upended at the 21-yard line. Let's check in with Matt Chick, who I'm sure has never used a razor in his life. You know, Anish, with great mustache comes great responsibility. I would know nothing about that. We check in with Ohio State again, reigning national champs, some playoff hopes. JT Barron to Michael Thomas for the touchdown. They're up 7 nothing. Meanwhile, Florida ranked 11th by the selection committee, up 7 nothing on South Carolina. The touchdown pass, Jordan Cronkrite, his second touchdown. They're up 14 nothing. Anish. All right, thank you, Matt. Tyrone swoops into the game at quarterback for Texas. He hands it off on first down into the 26-yard line. Goes Jonathan Gray. Swoops normally comes in in short yardage goal line situations, the 18-wheeler. But Charlie Strong electing to start this drive with Tyrone swoops. I'm a little surprised that we're just now seeing him at this point in the ball game, but he's more the developed passer. Look for him to try to stretch the field with deep balls. Foreman about three and a half yards shy of the first down marker. And now you've got third and two, and this is 18-wheeler territory. Yeah, it is. And you see they bring in more muscle with Delatore. 
H back slash full back. Texas Swoops, he's 20 of 28. 71% of his carries have gone for a first down or a touchdown. This package has been money for Texas. He had five touchdowns last week against Kansas. And this is Swoops. There's the power. The 18-wheeler still rumbling all the way to the 48-yard lines for the gain and the first down. Yeah, and West Virginia's defense has already struggled, but this is just a quarterback power. That was great vision there from Tyrone Swoops. He hit the cutback, breaks a couple tackles, but this West Virginia defense um, against Baylor and TCU, they had 60 combined missed tackles. You see some missed tackles there. They've already got six today. Keep an eye on that because if Texas can take advantage of that, you'll see some big plays once they get past the second level. Foreman. He breaks a tackle and then drags a defender to the 33-yard line. It was Jared Harper with the stop. You know, to go back to swoops, West Virginia defensive coordinator Tony Gibson said, you cannot let him run north-south. You have to get him going east and west. Easier said than done. Yeah, it is. He's just a big, large man. And he's gaining more confidence. You know, you didn't see a lot of this confidence from him last year when he was a starter. I think this backup role has been ideal for him. Foreman had that 65-yard touchdown run earlier, able to move the chains with a gain of three. And for Swoops, this has really been a renaissance in this offense. He lost his job after week one, struggled in that Notre Dame game over in South Bend, and you wonder what his role would be going forward. Well, this has been a valuable role, and he has been almost automatic in the red zone. Right. Swoops to the air. Downfield in traffic, incomplete. Broken up by Drayvon Askew Henry. And there you see the production for Swoops in what they call the 18 wheeler package. They call it the 18 wheeler because of Swoops, his uniform number, 18. <laughs> yeah, in the bottom there, all nine rushes resulting in, resulting in first downs. I mean, it's about moving the chains, and, and I think that's part of the move here for him to go at quarterback. Uh, you just need to get some momentum and be able to sustain some drives. Swoops is going to keep this one. He ran into Foreman, gets away from Dillon, and finally brought down by Kwiatkowski after a gain of seven yards. There you see the raw power, but also the missed tackles by West Virginia. Yeah, this is a concoction perfect for Texas. A team that doesn't tackle well and a big ball carrier like Swoops. I think he makes a good decision. Shakes off the first guy, K.J. Dillon, and just continues to churn those legs and move forward. He's a big man, and boy, did those extra yards just help here in this third yardage situation. Now you can get into your 18-wheeler package, run the power, run the counter off of it. This is what Texas wants to do. Now they'll run power. Swoops. He's got a first down if the play stands. There is a flag. Holding offense number 42. Ten yards from the previous spot. Replay third down. Yeah, that's Caleb Blewett. He's been a, a very good blocker for this Texas team. He's aggressive, played defense as I talked about earlier, and now he's moved to the offensive side of the ball and has taken that same type of mentality. But that penalty there hurts as now you've got to change your personnel. And like I said, the prior play, you've had most of your success on short yardage in the 18-wheeler package. Now you're putting the hand in the quarterback, asking him to throw the football, and that'll be the major difference when you have penalties like that that set you back. Swoops under 50% as a passer this year. He'll step up and run. And he's going to be taken down at the 36-yard line. And it's fourth down for Texas. About a 53-yard field goal from here. So let's see if Charlie Strong elects to keep the offense out on the field. Yeah, and they are. You don't see the punt team forming up on the sideline. They're going to go for this one as Tyrone Swoops is letting the offensive line know the play. 
Looks like some one-on-one -on -one matchups down here. Those are usually favorable in these types of situations. Swoops running the speed option. Finds the pitch man and a first down for Texas, Deontay Foreman. Gutsy call there from Charlie Strong. No question about it. And great execution on the part of Texas. Tyrone Swoops making the right play by pitching the ball to Foreman. Foreman getting the corner. Aggressive play call there. And it pays off for the Horns. On the ground again. And a gain of three by Foreman. And Foreman closing in on 100 yards here in this first half. He had 12 carries for a career high 157 yards last week. Nine for 97 thus far. This is Foreman again. And he's inside the 20. He's got another Texas first down. That was the 11th play of the drive. And Ahmad, in the commercial break, you and I were talking about Texas's inability this season to really put together drives like this. Their best drive seems to be born off of big plays. And they haven't had many of those offensively, but they haven't had many drives like this this year. You're right. And that's the reason why some fans believe that Tyrone Fuchs is still the answer. Um, with his increased running ability and now him being the best passer on this team. I can offsides there. Kent Perkins, I believe, the right tackle. Ball start. Offense number 76. Five yard penalty, third down. So it'll be third and six on the previous spot. Texas did not get that first down call. So third and six. And as we saw last time on what was it? Fourth and about six. A run play could very well be on the table here. Jonathan Gray in the backfield. Lorenzo Joe, the slot receiver. Marcus Johnson lined up at the bottom of your screen. And a timeout by Dana Holgerson with 159 to go here in the first half. On this drive for 54 yards, six minutes and five seconds off the clock. That's how you sustain the drive. Jonathan Gray in motion on third and six. And Swoops keeps it, breaks one tackle. The ball is out. Who's got it? West Virginia football. That is why you call a timeout. The defensive adjustment there from Tony Gibson. He, he, he brought more numbers inside of the box saying, Tyrone Swoops is going to run the football. I'm sure that was the message he gave his guys on the sideline. And Nick Kwiatkowski with the big hit there to pull and rake the football out. That changes the momentum of the game. And you watch him here, just a very aggressive tackle, the head in the right over. location. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 95 in West Virginia. That's his first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. So if you heard there. Brad Van Vark, Daryl Worley recovered that fumble, but an unsportsmanlike penalty on defensive end Christian Brown. One more, he's ejected. The foul is on number 95 of West Virginia. Mountaineer football, 148 to go in this first half. And if you're Charlie Strong, they've shown up for this road game. 259 yards in the first half. West Virginia only 149. But thanks to a defensive touchdown, the Mountaineers with a four-point lead. And Texas, they've done a really good job of taking care of the football this season. Not in this first half, two turnovers. Yeah, that's that's disappointing, and that just that's a drive killer. You know, anytime you give the ball back 
to a team. You see it here, committed seven turnovers, um, tied for fewest in the FBS, and now they've already got two. Uh, not the start you would like if you were Texas, as it looks like that particular turnover may have taken some points off the board. Wendell Smallwood on first down into the secondary. And finally taken down by Hall after a gain of 21. And that's where he's dangerous. Anytime he can get to the second level and utilize that quickness and that acceleration, you can see why he's the most dangerous player on this offense. They'll feed Smallwood again, and he wisely gets out of bounds. That'll stop the clock with 1.30 to go, a gain of five. 95 yards in this first half for Smallwood. Yeah, and typically in these two-minute situations, so there's an injured player on the ground. It looks like Desmond Jackson, senior defensive tackle for Texas. Usually in these situations, you put a lot of pressure on your quarterback in two-minute drill for him to be able to throw the football. But Dana has said that this is not a quarterback yet that they trust with the ball in his hands like that to throw the football. So you saw them come out. What do they do? They run the football, try to get him adjusted. They get a good carry there and a good run there from Smallwood to try to take some pressure off the quarterback. 90 seconds to go here in this first half. Matt Schick with a preview of halftime. What do you got, Matt? And Ish, much to get to here coming up at halftime. Big day coming up for the Big 12. As we mentioned, Baylor and Oklahoma. Kevin Carter will give his keys to that game. J.T. Barrett back after his one-game suspension. How are the Buckeyes looking? Still in a tight one with Illinois. We'll update you there. And Michigan State and TCU trying to bounce back from losses. See you then. We well, still have 90 seconds to go here in this first half. Second and five, West Virginia from the Texas or rather from their own 37. Another run play. Smallwood looking for room. And he gets free across the 45. It's another first down for West Virginia, a gain of 10. Smallwood over 100 yards for the sixth time in seven games. Yeah, Smallwood there. He saw Dylan Haynes coming into the box and just cut away from him. Clock continues to run as we come up on a minute to play. Dana Holgerson still has two timeouts. Howard will take a shot downfield. And it's caught by Durant for a West Virginia touchdown. We've talked a lot about Howard's ability to get his team into the right run there, but that was eye manipulation from Howard. We'll go back and take a look at this play, but he literally moves the safety with his eyes. Jason Hall keeps him in the middle of the field as the double move on the outside that beat the young cornerback, Devontae Davis. As he was able to put the ball on a nice lob, but watch Howard here initially. He looks off the safety. Hall, who can't get to this football, he'll come late in your screen. He looked that safety off. Had he not done that, Jason Hall might have been in a position to make a play. But Skyler Howard, not known for his passing prowess, that time there really showing that he could throw the ball down deep. And this is a team that when they do hit you with a pass play, they hit you with a big one. A big confidence booster for Javon Durant, who had struggled with drops of late. And a freshman out of Miami has given the Mountaineers a cushion. Point after by Lambert is good. Off the Texas turnover, Howard to Durant, 21-10. But when you, give, when you get the ball back to an offense, you take away those possessions, and those are very valuable when you're trying to score points. One minute to go here in the first half as we take a look at that last touchdown. Yeah, just brilliant eye manipulation from the quarterback here, Howard. But watch how he moves this safety and forces this safety to stay in the middle of the field rather than to try to get back to this hash. He's the middle of the field safety. And then here at the bottom of the screen, this is a double move from the wide receiver, Durant. Just holds the cornerback, Devontae Davis, long enough to get behind him in coverage. And an excellent throw there from Howard. Puts it right on the money. He catches the football. That is what West Virginia has been wanting from their quarterback and to see him develop into a competent passer. And they did it here against Texas. 
Gerard Hurd back in the game at QB. Swoops had the last series. Texas elects to keep it on the ground with Jonathan Gray for a gain of three. Longhorns have all three timeouts. This is not really their strength, though, when they've got to go to the air in these two-minute situations. And they'll keep it on the ground again. And Gray tackled right at the first down marker. And that'll move the chains. It momentarily stops the clock. 34 seconds left. 11-point deficit. And now the clock will start to run. We have not seen Texas take a shot downfield with John Burke. Now they're just taking their time here. I'm not sure what's going on here. This seems like poor clock management. Now this is with three timeouts. And they'll just run it once more to Gray. And that'll take us to the end of the first half. Texas will receive to start the second half. Charlie Strong's team staring down an 11-point deficit on the road. West Virginia winning the turnover battle and winning on the scoreboard. Time for halftime and Matt Schick. Get here, Devontae Davis, the freshman, gets a pick. Uh, not the best thrown ball there by Howard. The offense comes back out. They go three and out. So what happens then? You see more turnovers. West Virginia capitalizing on this one. They take it to the house. And then finally, the last turnover, you see it here. Kwiatkowski doing a nice job of getting the football out. What happens two plays later? Whoop, over the top, touchdown. West Virginia has been controlling this game, but it's been their ability to get points off of turnovers that's been most important. Chris Boyd runs it out to the 21 for Texas. You look at the first half drive chart for the Longhorns. Punt, field goal, fumble, touchdown, punt, fumble, end of half. Down 11, this has been a fragile Texas team in 2015. There's a big question of how much fight is left in this team, especially being on the road and being down two scores. It's been very difficult for them to handle obstacles that come their way early on. When they are trailing at half, this year, under Charlie Strong, they are 0-9. This season, they are 0-3. So this is not a team that knows how to deal with pressure coming out after halftime. We'll see what they do here today in Morgantown. They'll keep it on the ground to Jonathan Gray, who picks up two. Texas ran for almost 190 yards in that first half. In fact, this doesn't feel like a typical Big 12 game. Both of these teams went rush heavy in the first 30 minutes. Gray once more. It'll bring up a third down for Texas. And this is a pivotal possession in true road games this season. Eight of Texas's 11 third quarter drives have been three and outs. Yeah, that's not what you want to see right there. Jonathan Gray coming off. Um, we remember the last time he was here, had an Achilles injury. He's over there about being evaluated now on the sideline. Bird's pass is caught. That's Alex De La Torre, who did not play last week. And it was actually De La Torre who, in that 2013 game here in Morgantown, had the game-winning touchdown catch in overtime. Yeah, it was surprising to see him get the football there. One thing that I like, um, the quick passing game. We saw Gerard Hurd have success with this last week. Short, intermediate routes, putting things in front of his face and giving him outlets. I mean, that seemed to help him last week. Play action. Incomplete intended for Foreman. Covered that time by the safety Askew Henry. Heard five out of seven, 89 yards. Had a rushing touchdown called back because of a penalty. Foreman looking for some running room. And Deontay Foreman to the 35-yard line, a gain of four. Third and six. And for Foreman, back-to-back 100-yard -back games. In fact, he went over in the first half. 
A Longhorns four of nine on third down against one of the better third down defenses in the country. One-on-one -on -one matchup up top here for John Burt. Bird rolling to his left, throws on the run, and that's caught by DJ Johnson for a first down. I like the play call there from offense coordinator Jay Norvell, Norvell getting hurt on the move. But what that does is it gives him two options. He can either tuck that thing and run if the edge is there, or he can try to find the short completion like he did there. The one thing it does limit is the field. You only have half of the field as an option, and so you better flood that area. If not, there's not a lot of outlets there for, for Gerard Hurt. Foreman breaks one tackle into West Virginia territory, fires a stiff arm at Worley, and he's close to a first down. He's just an aggressive runner. Yeah, that's what he does. I mean, he, he likes to beat the defense up, and, and with that large 240-pound frame, it's easy for him to do. That last run was good for a first down, high snap. This is Foreman again. And he runs with such brute force and we're starting to see speed as well. Give him five there as Kwiatkowski made the tackle. He's coming off the field as well. Looks like here, he's trying to get a breather. Jonathan Gray already went out on this series. We haven't seen him re-enter the ball game. Now you've got a young freshman running back in the game, Chris Warren the third from Rockwall, Texas. It's also another big back still learning how to lower his pads and, and get behind those things and run with power. Warren gets the call. He's got some room into the secondary and tripped up by Worley after a gain of 23. See it here, just downhill running, and they get behind Delatore. Nice job of sealing it off there from Vahe, the guard, and also the fullback there, Delatore. And he goes untouched. The first contact came downfield. That's, you know, those types of runs, especially when you're a running back, are what gets you going. It was the longest run of the season for Warren, who gets to the 18-yard line. Warren, the son of former Seahawk, Chris Warren. Dad was a terrific Bad running back. Man. <laughs> for more than a decade in the NFL. One year he won the AFC rushing title was a former pro bowler as well. This is Warren around the edge. And a good job by West Virginia sealing off the boundary. That was. You know, and they're running to the football right now. And I think one of the most intimidating things if you're an offense when you're watching film, you see 11 guys playing team defense. and. You know, this West Virginia unit hasn't done that all year long, but I think when you turn on the film last week and see what they were able to do versus a dominant Texas Tech uh, passing attack and offense, they were outstanding. Their best performance of the year by far. Hurd tucks it. And he dives to the 10-yard line. For another Longhorn first down as the drive continues. Off schedule plays. You don't coach this. This was not a designed play, but Hurd's intuition, his feel for the pocket getting a tad bit tight, and him also seeing yardage. A very smart play there for a guy that is known for doing that with his legs. He did it while he was at Denton Geyer up there in the state of Texas. 13th play of the drive. Foreman trying to change directions. It's not there. West Virginia really standing tall there, just clogged up. All the gaps there. Foreman looking for a place to run. Not much there. West Virginia getting healthier on defense. Jared Barber, who had a fumble return for a touchdown, left last week's game with an injury. He's playing today. Terrell Chestnut back after an injury. Carl Joseph out for the season. He's their best defensive player. Foreman broke the initial tackle and shoved out of bounds by Barber. 
third down now for Texas. Yeah, Christian Brown had the first opportunity on him, the young man from Fort Myers, Florida. Foreman manages to get away. And this is a big third down for both teams. Texas can still get a first down. It's third down and four from the five. And there is an injured Longhorn down on the field. It is Foreman. We saw Jonathan Gray come out earlier in this series. Foreman, 128 yards rushing. Closer to bowl eligibility. Third and four, Texas from the five. 15th play of the drive. Heard rolling to his right, throws on the run. Touchdown, Texas, DJ Johnson. Just good execution on the part of Texas. DJ Johnson was the inside guy on the bunch set and just uses it to perfection to get underneath, get outside into the flat, slides right out there. Gerard Hurd on the move, puts the ball on the money. Touchdown for Texas, and that's the first drive today where they've been able to sustain it, getting first downs, and actually score a touchdown. The first one, I believe, was eight plays when they kicked the field goal. If you're Texas, that's a good positive sign coming out of halftime. A strong statement out of the locker room, a 15-play, 80-yard drive that took up almost six and a half minutes. Deontay Foreman, you saw him go down before we went to commercial on that last drive. He's had a terrific game, as has Wendell Smallwood for West Virginia. It's what you expect in this game if you followed these two teams, a run-heavy offense, if you're maybe new to what West Virginia's doing this year, you might be surprised that the Mountaineers like to run it as well. Yeah, you're right, but eight and a half per play for Foreman and nine and a half there for Smallwood. <laughs> I mean, that's almost that's almost a first down for every touch. I mean, these two young guys are really showing today that, that they can play some football. Texas has run 51 plays, 41 rushing plays. West Virginia has run 32 plays. 23 have been rushing plays. Yeah, we, we expected that coming into this game, even talking to Dana and both Charlie Strong this week in our conference calls. They, they made it very clear. You know, these two teams, their strength is running the football. And today you've seen it. And I think the difference on that last drive was Texas was able to, to pick up some tough yardage, and that's what moved the chains. And then they were able to, to get one into the end zone. Durant, who has a touchdown in this game, will not run it out. Let's look at our Jared Drive recap. A couple of big third down conversions. DJ Johnson there, and then Gerard Hurd with his feet. Yeah, it's good to see your quarterback in critical situations do this. Three third down plays, Gerard Hurd coming through for his team. A young quarterback still trying to gain confidence and grow as he didn't have the best first half. That's a good positive sign for the Texas Longhorns. Russell Shell starts in the backfield for Dana Holgerson. Shell running behind Wellman. And he's able to pick up three. And Shell this year just hasn't really gained his confidence yet. And then talking to Dana, they, they really need these two guys to be a one-two punch. And it wasn't until last week that you really saw the confidence grow. He was able to really make some big plays on the ground versus Texas Tech, and they're hoping for the same thing here in the second half out of Shell. Crest goes in motion. Shell gets the call. And he just Amtrak Dylan Haynes on his way for four yards. Yikes. <laughs> I've been on that side of it before. He just gets lower, and you see him here. Dylan Haynes trying to get the proper leverage. Oh my, oh my. And Smallwood there running his mouth after the play. I don't blame him when you, when you hit that hard. <laughs> Howard's pass caught by Shorts, and it looks like he's going to be just short of that first down marker. Fourth down and one. And this is where West Virginia, if they are going to go for it, they like to get on the ball quickly and go. 
It looks like they're sending out the punting unit. You can see the frustration there on the offensive line. They are not happy about it. I think they wanted a shot at trying to get this fourth and fourth and inches. You think he's had a few Red Bulls today? Of course he has. <laughs> <laughs> we were in the coach's office yesterday, and we spotted a fridge <laughs> full of Red Bulls. Johnson bottled up immediately. Here comes a late flag. Another terrific punt by Nick O'Toole. During the return, illegal block in the back, receiving team number two, half the distance to the goal, first down. Timeout. Oh, Coach Red Bull is fired up on the sidelines. He's had more than a couple today. Of course, our thoughts and prayers with those affected and impacted in Paris, and we hope sports can maybe be a diversion from you if you're with us today. A little escape from the horrific events that went down yesterday in the City of Light. Good to see Jonathan Gray back in the ball game for Texas. He picked up nine on that carry. Gray closing in on the top ten all time and rushing yards at Texas. He'll get the call again and he's tackled right at the line of scrimmage. Third down. Barber on the stop. Yeah, something just doesn't seem right with the senior there as he went down kind of early. It's got to be very difficult for him. Big third down here, but third and short always gives you a lot of options. This is what every offensive coordinator wants to be. They want to be in this situation when calling plays. Is 18 wheeler package. It swoops. He'll run, and he bullies his way to the 20. Yeah, you said it. I mean, he just gets those those pads square, heads downhill, and even if you know the play is coming and the success that Texas has had, you know, if you're on defense, you know exactly where they're running the football. Why can't still, anybody stop it? Well, I think the execution, um, and they, they're really getting some momentum out of that set, and sometimes when you're in offense, when you get that kind of confidence in a package, it's hard to stop. Heard back in. He gives to Chris Warren for two. Warren and ESPN 300 running back coming out of high school. Big time recruit. Big Texas over Washington. And they say it came down to a coin flip. <laughs> An actual coin flip. That is amazing. <laughs> Warren out of the backfield, and I'm not sure he realized how far he was and how close he was to the sideline. Yeah, and, and that, that might have been the case, but I'll also say this. Hurd saw the pressure coming. You've got to get that ball out of your hands sooner because you're on the short side of the field. You're throwing that ball into the boundary, so you've got to give your running back an opportunity to catch the football and make something happen. Another third down, third and long situation coming up here. Texas has had success today in this bunch set. Let's see if they go back to it. Mountaineers crowd the box. The rush three. Heard looking for room, tackled from behind by Barber. So fourth down for Texas. Dixon on to punt. Jennings will return for West Virginia. Coming after Dixon. Fair catch signal, and it's made by Jennings at the 43 yard line, a 36 yard punt. For a playoff spot, if you're the Longhorns, you don't want to go into that situation playing for the postseason. Look how good the Mountaineers have been on first down today. Nine and a half yards on average. That's impressive. That's Wendell Smallwood. 
And he's to the 47 for a gain of four. Smallwood continues to run well. 12 carries, 110 yards. To midfield, a gain of three. Third down coming up for West Virginia. West Virginia, one out of six on third down this afternoon. Come on, come on, come on. Howard to Shorts for the first down. A fastball. Nice hands there by Shorts. Good recognition there by Howard. Recognize that Texas had a lot of numbers in the box. Going quickly. Smallwood tiptoes the sideline. And that's a big game for the Mountaineers. Look, they're going so fast. Texas didn't even have an opportunity. Look at these guys scrambling around trying to find where they're supposed to be. Not even lined up. Wow. Defense number nine. That penalty is declined. First down. The pace of this offense, and, and you talk about up tempo, um, that was that was getting up after the play, and it's got to be concerted effort on all the players' parts. When you get a big run or you get a first down, you've got to look to the sideline, get organized, get get back to your position, and ready to roll. That time there, the Mountaineers really pressing the gas with tempo, and they'll pick their spots when they do that. Crest motions. Here's Smallwood. He B buttons his way to the 12 yard line. Dana Holgerson told us yes, they like to go fast, but they won't always go fast. Part of the guessing game defenses have to play. Howard on the keeper. Able to get by Jefferson and pick up three more. Third and four now for the Mountaineers. Yeah, and most of the plays that come in for West Virginia are package plays. There's a run attached to a pass, and it is Howard's decision on what play he thinks is best to get him in. You see him there moving the running back over. That's Howard's doing. Howard will throw for shorts. Did he hold on? He did! if we can get a good angle on this to see if he hauls it in. Beautiful pass from Howard. I mean, the mark that you're trying to hit is this pylon right here, and he almost hit it dead on. Looks like he secured the catch to me. Second ball today that we've seen Howard throw that has been very impressive. And when you watch him on film, you haven't seen a lot of that. But today, getting the right opportunities, putting the ball in the right location, you can see here this young man is right now glowing in confidence and Skyler Howard 10 out of 12 two TD passes this for a guy who had been completing less than 50 percent of his passes in conference games Dana Holgerson told us he's listed generously Howard is at six feet but the football IQ off the charts yep. And he also said he's got limitations to his game, but he knows that. And he's just, despite having those limitations, he plays on. Just a simple corner out on the money. West Virginia scores again. Howard today really showing of what he can do when he's on and when he's feeling good. A chance here for the freshman, Chris Boyd. Boyd tripped up, the ball is out. Another fumble by Texas. West Virginia football. And I'll say this, West Virginia has played excellent special teams today. No question. They have gone out and tackled extremely well with special teams. Creating a turnover though, this is just icing on the cake. 
They have been running their pads through Texas ball carriers. Great job, great awareness there. Number 14, doing an excellent job of getting his hand on the ball there. Kamaya just raking it out and not the best job there from Boyd of protecting the football. He's a defensive back, not used to carrying the ball a lot. West Virginia with a short field with momentum on their side and a hot offense. Do you take a shot right here after sudden change? You could, or you could stick to the ground game that has been working for him all game long. It's Shell. Gets a block from Wellman. And Shell upended at the 10. A gain of a dozen and a first down. How many times have we shed nice block by 28 Elijah Wellman? Yeah, it's just a very unselfish guy and is doing everything he can to make sure he's taken out defenders. Shell reaches for the six yard line, second and goal. A touchdown here would make it a three score game. Howard changing the play. He'll roll to his right. Howard trying to lunge over the defenders. Third and goal. Haynes and Thomas met him. I'll tell you what. Senior defensive back Duke Thomas made, makes an excellent play here. He was in coverage. Comes off of the block and makes a fine tackle. If not, Howard would have had the edge and it would have been an easy score for him. West Virginia has had red zone struggles this season. They've been pretty good today. The two tight end look. They like to run out of this look. Timeout. Well, we got a timeout. We'll step aside. 14 seconds to go, third quarter. Third and goal, West Virginia. Oh, that'll get a few screen grabs right there. <laughs> Dana Holgerson told us his personal record was somewhere in the double digits for Red Bulls consumed in one day. You know, the whole team right now is on Red Bull the way they are putting it on the Texas Longhorn. Third and goal from the three. Howard will keep it. And he has stood up fourth down for West Virginia. Malik Jefferson with a big tackle for Texas. Yeah, number 46, Malik Jefferson is going to be a special player. He's going to be a leader for this team. That time there, following the football, hunting it. This drive started with a fumble on the kickoff. It'll be fourth and goal, Mountaineers, when we start the fourth quarter. John De Palma to snap, O'Toole to hold. Lambert drills what's essentially a point after, and West Virginia tacks on three more. Time for a studio update with Matt Schick. Thanks, Anish. Florida State was down 17 to seven, and then Dalvin Cook. Quarterback trips, he does not, going into the end zone. Broke work done single season school record for rushing for Florida State. They're tied at 17 there, we'll keep you posted. Meanwhile, for TCU, Trevon Boykin out for the game with an ankle injury, he will not return. TCU has turned to third stringer Foster Sawyer, redshirt freshman and quarterback. They're tied at 10 with Kansas. Kansas, a 46 point underdog. And he, Kansas and UCF, the only winless teams in the FBS. And this was a Kansas team that was obliterated by Texas last week, 59 to 20 in Austin. Yeah, but when you don't have your stellar and star quarterback for TCU, he makes that offense go. I mean, what he's meant for them don't forget has been amazing. Their top receiver. Very much so. Josh Doxson, one of the top wide receivers in the country, certainly would have been on my Bolitnikoff list as, as a guy who would have been um, up for that award. Texas fumbled the last kickoff. That was Chris Boyd. This is DeJay Johnson. Is 
Special teams coverage has been outstanding oh, has. for West Virginia. And the Mountaineers have also capitalized on turnovers. 17 points off three Texas fumbles. That they have, and you see here just an opportunistic defense. That time, Kwiatkowski getting the ball out. Now here, over the top, they throw the touchdown. Two plays later, and then you see it here. Kickoff coverage, outstanding for them, as Anish just said. That turns into a field goal, and that's been the difference in this ball game when you look at it. Texas has shot themselves, and West Virginia has taken advantage of it. And at the end of the day, look, if you're West Virginia, you make no apologies for Texas not protecting the football. This team had seven turnovers in nine games coming into today. Three turnovers that have resulted in points. Just not something that you look for if you're Charlie Strong and you're this staff. I'm sure he'll be very disapp disappointed. There was a penalty on the kickoff on Texas, so the Longhorns start at the 10. Heard over the middle, open receiver, and that's caught. Doge Johnson, a gain of 36. Yeah, that really puts stress on the defense. Just four seam routes down the field. And Gerard Hurd doing a nice job of putting the ball right on the money to J.J. Johnson. And here's the deal. This guy has been kind of a, a do-it-all, jack-of-all-trades kind of player, finally settling into the wide receiver position. Big catch there for Johnson. Over the middle and through the hands of Armonte Foreman, the twin brother of Deontay Foreman. Heard this season has been better with the long throws than he has with the short and intermediate passes. A lot of those have been in one-on-one -on -one opportunities because Texas was running the football or committing numbers to running the ball. Um, it's been a lot easier for him to find those matchups. West Virginia has done a good job today with a bunch of holes in the secondary. Yeah, guys that have been banged up, they're missing their best player, Caller Joseph. They've done a good job of limiting Texas. Deontay Foreman back in the game. After he went down earlier in this half, he picks up six. And Foreman up to 135 yards rushing. See that right hand there tap, uh, taped up on those two fingers. Looks like that's what he was holding when he went down. Third down here, though. This is still a distance where you can get the quarterback involved with the run game or hand it off to Foreman. Speed option. Flag on the play. There's the pitch to Foreman. He's got the first down, but a penalty could bring this back. This might be a free play. Offside, defense, number nine. That penalty's declined. First down. It was a free play, and Texas... Now 9 of 15 on third downs against one of the better third down defenses in the FBS. That's as good as Baylor, better than TCU, I believe, um, versus this defense. But the play call there, I think, was the right one. You go to the field, you give Gerard Hurd an opportunity to see what's developing in front of him, and he had a nice time pitch, even though he took a hit at the end of that play. Play action. Hurd's going to run, and he'll get out of bounds after a gain of two. You know, one of the most difficult things for dual threat quarterbacks is to know when to run the football. Because you rely so much on your legs, and for her to be special, for, for this team to really take off with him as a starting quarterback, he's got to be able to make those decisions effectively well. If he will not, it'll be very easy for teams to put a spy on him, get an athlete on him, and try to track him down all ball game. Foreman, stiff arm. And shoved out of bounds by Terrell Chestnut. So another third down for Texas. They've been so good in these situations all game. And this is a critical drive as we come up on 13 minutes to play in the fourth. Yeah, you're getting to a point here where this Texas team doesn't have a lot of confidence nor experience in coming from behind. This is a big play. Gerard Hurd has been pretty good on third downs today. Let's see what he can pull out of the hat here. Heard under pressure, and he's got to get rid of it. It was Kwiatkowski who brought the blitz. They bring a five-man blitz. 
Tony Gibson has said, we are very aggressive. I like to blitz. You saw it there, then bring pressure. He goes unblocked, Kwiatkowski does. Very difficult situation for her to be in as Texas knows they've got to go for it here on a fourth down. Charlie Strong wants to talk it over first. Jay Norvell, the Texas play caller, he took over for Shona Watson in week two. Huge call. Five-man rush. Heard downfield. Intercepted by Worley. This the defense. fourth interception of the season for Daryl Worley. Yeah, and Worley was in perfect position here to make this play. Her going to the one-on-one the -on -one matchup with Imani Foreman, and unfortunately just didn't get enough mustard on the ball. But Worley was in the prime position. He was in the hip pocket of the wide receiver. And, and like wide receivers, one of the hardest balls to catch is one that's thrown right to you. And that time there, being able to secure the catch, you look at the last five drives here, it just, uh, wow. West Virginia's offense has been on fire. Um, Texas only forcing that three and out with the punt. Aside from that, West Virginia really has the momentum and in a good rhythm right now offensively. West Virginia has had a strong running game. Skyler Howard has played well, made some big plays, both with his arm and his feet. And you look at what Texas has done, four turnovers. They had seven all season coming into the game. West Virginia will start at the two after the Worley interception. Elijah Wellman, the fullback. And he takes it out to the seven-yard line for a gain of five. I'm going to say it again. Left guard Adam Pankey, center Tyler Orlowski, right guard Kyle Bosch. These guys today have really leaned on this Texas front. My impact player was Hassan Ridgeway. He's been silent. Desmond Jackson, been silent. This offensive line for West Virginia, you can see, they are very strong inside. That's the strength of this team, the interior of that O-line, as you pointed out. Smallwood. Tackled at the 10-yard line by Duke Thomas. Last, short. last week versus Texas Tech, West Virginia had a, a drive over six minutes long to finish off the game. They're built for this because they run the football, try to milk the clock out. This is a big third down for Texas if they want to get themselves back into this ball game. Wellman in the backfield with the quarterback. Shorts motions. Howard on the run, chased by Shiro Davis. And he's pushed out of bounds. Shy of the first down marker, no gain, and a big stand by this Texas defense. Yeah, they were trying to slide somebody out into the flat, but the defense did a good job of tracking down the quarterback and taking care of both options. And, you know, as a defender, you're in a real pickle when the quarterback gets loose because do you leave your man to come up and try to make a play or do you stay in coverage? That time there, Texas doing a good job and off the field on third down. Jay Johnson back deep for Texas. O'Toole has had a terrific game punting the ball for West Virginia. Did that hit a Texas player? Well, it doesn't matter. It went out of bounds. And that was not a good punt by O'Toole. Good field position for Texas. College basketball Sunday on the U. Fairfield against number one North Carolina, the Heels. 
without their top player, Marcus Page, out with a broken wrist. And Siena will take on last year's national runner-up, Wisconsin. There's still a lot of time left in this ball game. The Texas just hasn't been able to really get a rhythm going offensively. And if, you know, time is starting to run out. With 10 minutes, you've still got a shot. Defense getting off the field, helping you with this short field. They've got to capitalize. Bird's going to throw. Open receiver. That's caught. Johnson takes it inside the 10. Jay Johnson on another corner route. And this was play action pass. Runs a good route there as Texas going into up tempo, trying to get this West Virginia defense on its heels. Out of the empty set. Hurd gets away from Kukowski. Couldn't get away from the second defender, Noble Wachuku. The redshirt junior out of Wiley, Texas. That is the second time that I've seen Kwiatkowski just come clean and put pressure right in the face of Hurd. Not sure why that is happening, but if you're Texas, you've got to adjust there because this young man is a ball player. And then, hey, look, right now for Texas, things are getting real. You've got to start making some decisions and making some plays because you've got an opportunity to still come back and get in this game. The time is drawing near. Empty look, Foreman, the running back, lined up as a wide receiver. Heard throws, that was intended for Foreman, and it went through his hands. That's not his strong suit. It's certainly not. And, and now, keep in mind, we kept talking about that right hand that was bandaged up. And when it's tender like that, it's hard to throw it out in front of a football coming with that type of velocity. So why would you split him wide in that situation? Well, I think he was an open man. And Hurd was just throwing to the open man. That was the progression of the play. And he was. He was open. If he catches that football, it's good yardage. Hurd on the run. And he'll run out of bounds as he saw Wachuku coming. A penalty marker at the 19. Holding, offense number 76. That penalty is declined, brings up fourth down. So it is fourth and goal now. West Virginia declines the penalty. It would have been third and goal, and you would have backed him up another 10 yards. Interesting decision by Dana Holgerson there, but it'll be fourth down, and Rose will come on for about a 33-yard field goal. Nick Rose drills the field goal. Texas comes away with three, but still down two scores. Play here in regulation. Fifth meeting all time between these schools. Since West Virginia joined the Big 12, Texas two and one against the Mountaineers. West Virginia won the first meeting, Texas the last two. Another touchback for Nick Rose. College football tonight, Oklahoma and Baylor in Waco. Game day was in Waco this morning. That's the prime timer on ABC. Here's the hypothetical for you, Ahmad. If the four teams currently in the top four spots in the college football playoff rankings win out, and let's say the Big 12 has an undefeated champion, is that champion left out of the playoff? I don't think so. Yeah, I, I, I don't see that happening right now, though. I do understand and respect both the positions of Alabama and Notre Dame being right now in the playoff with one loss. I just think that'd be hard to leave an undefeated team in a power conference out. A yard for Smallwood. The knock on Baylor has been the non-conference schedule. They have their three biggest games coming. They've got Oklahoma, they've got TCU, they've got Oklahoma State. You would think the Bears get a bump from those wins. The question is, would it be enough to bump them ahead of the teams that are already ahead of them, including a couple of one-loss teams? 
I think it will. And I also think the committee is still trying to evaluate what this Baylor team is made of. And, and they'll have a, a perfect opportunity to show it here down the stretch. Third and five for West Virginia after the run by Smallwood. Well, everybody in the Big 12, all the heavyweights at least, they all play each other down the stretch. It's going to be a fun month. We saw Oklahoma State knock off TCU last week. The Cowboys very much in it. And Oklahoma as a one-loss team, great opportunities with three resume-building wins left. And if Boykin is hurt, just count to allow TCU. They're out of the mix. And now you're looking at a three-team race because I, it would be very hard for me to believe that TCU could still be in it without their star quarterback. On third down, Smallwood taken down in the backfield. That's Paul Boyette, the nose tackle. So Texas's defense still giving this Longhorn team a lifeline. That they are. That lifeline is running short right now. We said it at the top of the broadcast for Texas, really, this is a must win. Yes, mathematically, they can still become bowl eligible with a loss today, but that means you've got to go into Waco and beat Baylor. Tools kick takes a Texas bounce only a 31 yarder as we check in with Matt Schick Thanks Anish update you on what's going on around in the top 25. How about Florida number 11 in all the land up 17 nothing Oh a little trickeration for South Carolina if you can't score got to get creative that's Farrell Cooper to Perry or touchdown it's 17 7 as South Carolina has just scored again to pull to within three meanwhile Ezekiel Elliott 15th consecutive 100 yard rushing game longest active in the FBS Buckeyes up 21 3 and he all right Matt here it's 31 20 West Virginia on top of Texas Longhorns again good starting field position intercepted by Kwiatkowski oh my there is a flag. Holding offense number 66. And penalty is declined. First down. Five turnovers. But look here, the impact player that we had, the linebacker just dropping right into the passing window. He followed Hurd's eyes from the beginning of that play until the football was in his hands. That's a veteran play right there. Really coming up big there for your defense. You see his teammates showing him love. That might have been the nail in the coffin for Texas. Texas has committed five turnovers today, seven in the first nine games. And how about Kwiatkowski? One of the more underrated players in this conference came to West Virginia as a 195 pound safety he's led this team in tackles the last three years that was a very athletic play he made too to be able to leap track the football secure the catch you can tell that his experience playing db really paid off there ahmad you live in austin you have a pulse of that program if texas falls today and drops to four and six howard's going to take off here has some room and he slides down inside the 35. If Texas falls to four and six with Texas Tech and Baylor still on the docket, how does this play in terms of fan reaction to a Charlie Strong and the questions people have about the direction of this program? It's a good question. And you know, and I think I think the fan base at this point is is somewhat split. Yeah, there are some people that believe that Charlie Strong deserves a third year, and it's hard to argue when you look at this recruiting class that he brought in this year. A lot of talented players that have logged in some good minutes. And then on the flip side of that, you know, has this team improved? And, and I think that's where you struggle. When you look at it on paper, it doesn't, it doesn't show that they have. Russell Shell to the 18-yard line, a gain of 18. Well, Charlie Strong built up a lot of goodwill with that win against Oklahoma. Injury time. There is an injured player on the field. It is Shell who's down. A lot of goodwill was built up with that win against Oklahoma. 
Good vibes heading into the bye week following that, a win against Kansas State. Folks thought that this program had turned the corner. Then you have a shutout loss at Iowa State. Ouch. A win last week against Kansas really doesn't do anything because Kansas has been pretty bad this season. And now you're looking at another loss on the road in Morgantown. You know, I, I think what's most important here is how ineffective this team has been on the road. And at some point, right, the players have to be ready to play. But also, you have to look at the coaching staff and say, why are these guys coming out lethargic, not motivated? And quite frankly, they haven't been competitive in some of these road games. Today, they at least hung in the ball game. But you, you can blame a lot of this on youthfulness. But with the talent that Texas has, I don't think that this should be a team that is struggling this mightily on the road. That being said, I, I think you've got to evaluate what you're doing right now as a program and maybe even hit the reset button, one they've already hit early on in the season. Here's Smallwood. And right now, West Virginia gashing Texas with the run game. You said hit the reset button. You're alluding to the changes made on the offensive side of the ball. We saw Jay Norvell take over as play caller for Sean Watson after one week. I think most people assume there's probably going to be a new offensive play caller next season. Yeah, I think so. For Smallwood sure. all the way inside the five-yard line down to the one. And West Virginia is looking to put this one away. Yeah, this is not the team <laughs> that you want to be in a situation where at the end of the game they can run the football. And where have these runs come? Right up the gut, up the middle. And right now they've just worn down this Texas front seven and are really pouring it on with power, aggression. And this is what Texas wants to do to teams. They just haven't been able to do it today. You've got to give this West Virginia team credit. They knew that they had faced the toughest teams in this conference to this point, and they felt like this was a team that they could beat, and they've come out, they've come out here today and shown that. Smallwood. He's turned away. A lot of credit goes to Dana Holgerson. When West Virginia lost the four consecutive games to the Big 12 heavyweights, people wondered how fragile the psyche of this Mountaineer yep. team was. Well, they bounced back with a tough win against Texas Tech last week on their way to a win here. And then you've got the Kansases, the Kansas States, the Iowa States left. There's a good chance West Virginia could finish the season 8-4. and four. You win your bowl game, that's a nine-win season, a lot to build on going into next year. I agree. Smallwood again. And Texas's defense holding here. It'll be third and goal. We saw this Texas Steve put up a couple of goal line stands last week and the win over Kansas. Yeah, but you need the ball here. And if you're Texas defense, you've got to hold up ball carriers. And the next guy that gets there has to try to get the football out. Because if they punch it in here, I'm just afraid that this game is over. They'd need a miracle. And we've seen a lot of those in college football this year. But with the way that this offense for Texas has struggled, it's hard for me to think that they could get back into the ball game. Smallwood, 165 yards, a new career high. He's a man. He set the old mark just a week ago. Shorts motions. Howard on the keeper. In for the touchdown. Signature play for West Virginia. The right guard pulls number 62, Kyle Bosch, and look at the block he gets just clearing the way. It's very easy for Howard to follow behind the 6'5", 310-pound right guard from St. Charles, Illinois. Howard punches it in as they're looking at him on the sideline, that right hand. But West Virginia today has won in the trenches. They've established a line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. And, and that is the reason why here they are up by a significant amount. In 2011, Charlie Strong's Louisville team beat West Virginia and Holgerson here in Morgantown. The Cardinals in the visiting locker room afterwards sang Country Roads. It does not feel like almost heaven for Charlie today. Today, and I think we'll give them more confidence moving forward. Kirk Johnson spun down. 
And it's time to look at today's good hands play brought to you by Allstate. We're going to give it to Dekeel Shorts. Third touchdown reception of the season for the junior out of Clayton, New Jersey. Great concentration there and a wonderful ball there from Howard. Second best ball of the day. We asked Dana Holgerson if Skyler Howard was a guy who plays with a so-called boulder on his shoulder. Texas kid, no FBS scholarships out of high school. Now in the Big 12, getting to face a lot of those teams again. And Holgerson, listen, he grew up with burnt orange in his bedroom. He grew up a Texas fan. Part of the reason he came to West Virginia was to exact a little revenge on some of the Texas schools that said you're too small to play Division I football. Yeah, that's a lot of players across the state of Texas when you play against Texas, and I understand that for sure. When you're overlooked by the school you want to go to, that happens. But Dana also said that he's not focusing on that with Howard. And at this point, he feels like Howard is over that. Now he's just trying to do the best he can for his team and stack up the Ws. Hurd is sacked by Wachuku. And it's going to be third down for Texas. Yeah, and, and West Virginia has now gone to a three. And they always put three down linemen, but they are dropping back everyone else. Exactly what Iowa State did, which, which makes it even harder for Texas at this point to come back. Tony Gibson, the West Virginia defensive coordinator. It's the first time Dana Holgerson has had the same D.C. in consecutive seasons. Pressure off the edge, little screen. Warren breaks one tackle, and he'll still lose yardage. Brought down near the 20-yard line, and it's fourth down for Texas. And you can go ahead and put the ribbon on ribbon wrapping paper on this one if you haven't already. Yeah, and this defense for West Virginia deserves a lot of credit. They were the best unit on the field today. Whether that was dropping back, getting interceptions, raking footballs out, coming up big on third downs, um, this West Virginia defense has had two back-to-back -back performances where they've really shut down offenses with um, you know, weapons. And so you got to give them credit. Defense coordinator Tony Gibson doing a good job of coaching his bunch. K.J. Dillon with the fair catch. 38 to 20, West Virginia, a buck 40 to go in that game. And then you've got to beat Baylor and Waco to become bowl eligible. And if you've watched Texas all year long, it's which team shows up? Is it the team that beat Oklahoma? Is it the team that we see here today on the road or the one at Ames, Iowa? And that's the way it's been. It's been a roller coaster all year long for Texas. And so you, you tell yourself, well, they have no shot to beat Baylor. And then you go back and everybody was saying the same thing about Oklahoma. So this is a team that has just been very inconsistent, and today West Virginia took full advantage of it. That's Shell on first down. There's the remaining schedule for both teams. If you're wondering, the football power index, the FPI, gives Texas only a 7% chance against Baylor. Meanwhile, West Virginia favored in its remaining games. And I can understand why with this rushing attack. The difference between the Oklahoma-Baylor game the Oklahoma game, a neutral site game in Dallas. Yep. Baylor is a true road game, and we've seen Texas in true road games. This was a game where they turned it over five times, and it's probably been their best road performance of the year. Smallwood still running. He's to the 30-yard line. How about Wendell Smallwood? Wendell Smallwood. Almost 170 yards, a new career high. This is a guy who played through an ankle injury earlier this season. There were a couple of weeks where he couldn't even practice. He's got a chance, if things break for him down the stretch, to finish as one of the top three rushers in a single season in the history of a program that's had some really good running backs. You're right, and he's a smart kid, too. You see him go down there, but uh, Dana Hogerson also said he is a student of the game and has perhaps the best understanding of this offense of anybody on the team. He's a fine football player. That'll do it for Morgantown. West Virginia over Texas, 38-20. to 20. The Mountaineers a step closer to bowl eligibility. The fans here at Mountaineer Field get to hear a little John Denver after this one. Country Roads is coming. Almost heaven for Dana Holgerson. Miami UNC next here on ESPNU, but first the studio at Matchday.